we have with us Nalin Mehta, consulting editor of the Times of India, to talk about uh, you, you know how and what should we watch out for in the upcoming elections. Uh, Mr. Mehta, thanks so much for joining in on ET. Now it's a pleasure having you with us. Um, let's talk then about uh, what can one watch out for when it comes to these elections. You know, a lot of people are saying, and not to um, uh, jump to any sort of, um, uh, you know, prediction making or crystal ball gazing, but the probability of Mr. Modi versus the Grand Alliance at this point of time still continues um, to be perhaps in favor of Mr. Modi. Uh, in fact, we had uh, Mr. Swaminathan Ayer as well, who's pegging it at 70%. Your thoughts on this? Well, uh, you know, out of the 91 seats which are going to the polls today, uh, eight of these are in Western UP, and that's where uh, the question that you just asked me—that's going to be the test case. In four of these, in four of these seats in 2014, had the SP, BSP, and the RLD been together, uh, they would have won in 2014, and the BJP would have lost. So, in that sense, uh, if, if, you, if I break it down further, with the, uh, you know, in a uh, in seats where uh, the RLD is standing, uh, uh, Ajit Singh's seat, Jayan Chaudhary's seat, in those seats, the Congress, by the way, has not put up a candidate. So there, there is a friendly arrangement there. But then other seats like Kerana uh, or Saharanpur, the Congress has put up strong candidates. Uh, so the point is that this is a, at one level, this is a big test case. This is, a, this is almost like a rerun what we used to see in the 1990s, the Kamandal versus uh, uh, the Kamandal versus the Mandal battle. This is part two of that. Uh, whether the arithmetic of this alliance can beat the charisma of Modi. That's the big test case. I think we'll, uh, we will get an early indicator of that. Uh, parties will make their own assessments at the end of today's voting and they will recalculate their calculus for the remaining six phases in UP to begin with. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is that it's not just uh, out of the 91 seats uh, voting today, 32 were in the Hindi heartland, uh, out of which the BJP had won the majority of them. But what's crucial today is also the seats in Andhra and uh, and Telangana uh, down south, because in uh, in the case of uh, you know if uh, in the case of Hung Assembly, the, uh, the the parties winning from there, the TDP, uh, the uh, uh, Jagan Reddy's party, the uh, the TRS, those will hold a lot of the balance of power in the in the next Lok Sabha, depending on 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 how the BJ, uh, how many seats the BJP is getting. So, is, so the two things for me to watch out for, and which I think we should really watch out for, is how uh, 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 the alliance versus BJP arithmetic works out in these eight Western UP seats, and and the number of seats that TRS can swing or or Jagan Reddy can swing. Okay, uh, you know, in places like uh, UP, etc., the big dominant factor is also the whole rural bit, like prices of produce, MSP, rural wages, etc. Um, so, how exactly do you think that's going to be a swing factor in this election? Because many. It's a known fact that, you know, from an agrarian point of view, um, many are unhappy with how the Modi wave has turned out over there. Uh, good question. Uh, if, for example, in the seats which are going to uh, vote in Maharashtra today, they are part of the Vidarbha region, which has been racked by farmer and rest. There's been issues around irrigation. Uh, at the same time, in Vidarbha, uh, all the seats which are which are going to vote there were either won by BJP or Shiv Sena last time. Uh, while there is a fair bit of anti-incumbency there, uh, uh, they are also hoping to cash in on uh, divisions within the Congress ranks. So, for example, in one of the seats in Maharashtra, uh, uh, the uh, candidate is someone who just left from Shiv Sena few days before uh, before filing of, of, uh, of nominations and then filed a, co a candidature as, as a Congress candidate. This is also the area where Ashok Chavan recently was put on, uh, you know, there was a videotape of him saying he was unhappy about, about ticket selection. So I think... Uh, uh, a divided house by the opposition there is something uh, which which might offset some of the uh, anti-incumbency in the areas of Vidarbha. The third thing, the other thing I want to point out is that um, uh, what's key to watch today are the four or five seats in Odisha and the two seats in West Bengal which are polling. Uh, Alipur Dwar and Kuch Bihar in West Bengal are the two seats uh, among the seven or eight with the BJP is hoping it would make some inroads to offset losses in the Hindi heartland because it is going to have losses in the Hindi heartland. Alipur Dwar, for example, the vote share difference was only about 1.7% last time. So you only need a swing of about 1, 1.1% to make a shift. Uh, it's similar in Kuch Bihar where the vote share difference was about 5% last time. So Odisha and West Bengal, these 6-7 seats uh, will also give us an early indication of the template for the remaining phases. 
Okay, all right. I'm going to ask you a question based on the manifestos of both the parties. Um, and, and I want to ask this because, you know, there was the BJP manifesto election, which of course did cover uh, quite a few issues, national security, obviously, uh, the Kashmir issue, illegal migration, produce prices. But I think what it lacked was anything about jobs. And that's really, I think, one of the crucial issues. At least uh, it has been a crucial issue for the last couple of years. And then, of course, there was no taking away the fact that the Congress as well had that last minute attempt announcing that social welfare scheme, Nyai. Um, how do you think it moved the needle? I mean, how did it change sentiment uh, for Congress, uh, for BJP or as well, if you have to look at it in light of the manifestos? Um, two things on manifestos. I'm not sure how much voters actually vote based on manifestos, which is partly why election uh, political parties normally re uh, release manifestos so late in the day. Elections are more on uh, on wider perception, uh, emotional issues and so on. Uh, but manifestos, be that as it may, are uh, statements of record. Now, specifically on the manifestos for 2019 of the Congress and the, and the BJP, I think the Congress manifesto is a significant improvement uh, on its previous one. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of thought into it. Uh, it is a it is a game-changing manifesto in terms of it's not just a, a, a rights-based agenda or a more liberal agenda that the Congress is espousing, as it has done in the past. Uh, it is, there is also significant outreach towards the industry. Uh, and here I'm talking about significant promises it makes on GST, on MSMEs, and so on. Uh, there is, this is for the first time that a Congress manifesto has spoken specifically on an outreach to the industry, uh, to the private industry. The BJP manifesto is more a repetition of what it had in 2014 with some uh, uh, incremental change to it. Um, uh, but in the end, uh, the, uh, as far uh, on Nyai, the question you asked on Nyai, uh, the Nyai scheme is something which can be a potential game changer. But uh, I think there may be a mismatch between what the con uh, between uh, um, uh, in how the Congress is getting the message out. I mean, our reporters have been reporting from different parts of the country. While the manifesto has been drafted very, fairly well and it makes uh, a, a number of new changes and Nyai, Nyai promises an interesting one. Uh, they, although there are questions on how it will be paid, the Congress has an argument on that. Raghuram Rajan and other economists, for example, have argued that it can be paid for if um, you uh, offset subsidies from, from, from other heads. Uh, the issue is not so much what the manifesto says, but to what extent it's being propagated down to the last mile to the last voter. And there I think there is uh, some distance the Congress still has to travel. Well, yeah, that's absolutely spot on. You know, not, I don't know how much of Indian elections are actually, or how much do Indian voters actually do consider manifestos, and that's the reason why I guess these um, the parties actually deliver these manifestos so late. But you know, schemes like NAI, etc., really get the pulse going for elections, and hence I thought it would be important to ask that question to you as well. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, Ms. Mehta, for joining in then and giving us your take on uh, the elections. The battle kick starts from today, phase one. Like we said, a uh, number of sta states actually going to go to polls. 91 seats in 20 states and union territories currently underway and I think so far the turnout especially in the northeastern states looks to be pretty good on West Bengal as well seems to be pretty good stay tuned to ET now of course we are going to constantly keep you up to speed on what's happening in the dance of democracy